So today I'll be using this Moonstone Cabochon to electroform into a pendant for the necklace that I'm making. So when choosing the object that you're going to electroform, make sure you pick something that has a hardness level of seven or above. Um, otherwise it will dissolve in the solution that you're using or um, the electroforming solution will end up eating away at the piece and destroying it. Um, it's gotta be of a hardness level of seven or above. If it's something softer, it will have to be sealed. And um, we can talk about that later. All right, so here is the Moonstone Cabochon. And this is a copper ring that I uh, took some, f I think it's 14 gauge copper round wire. And I bent it around uh, a mandrel and I made a circle. That's going to be the armature that attaches to the, pe the piece so that it, um, it can hang from a chain, a necklace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the stone on it and then I'm going to mark the sides of the copper wire with a sharpie where I want to cut that copper wire, that armature, so that I can make it fit perfectly on um, the sides of my cabochon. So I went ahead and took my Sharpie and I made the marks where I want to cut the copper so that it'll fit around my piece. Um, I, I'm going to use my saw to cut so that it'll be nice and flat when I cut. Um, so I'll get a sh nice straight cut so that it will fit perfectly um, how I want it to fit around both sides of the cabochon. So when all was said and done and I had fit my armature around my cabochon, this is where I decided I was going to keep it. So this is where I'm going to glue this armature onto the cabochon. And I'll show you what I use and how I do it. It's actually kind of one of the hardest things to do, I think. Just because I only have two hands, so. Okay, so this is the glue that I use. It's really super powerful, along with this spray, which is an accelerant that makes the glue dry really, really quickly. So both of those together, putting the armature on the cabochon is going to hold it in place. It's going to be really strong. Um, and I think you can get the spray on Amazon and probably the glue on Amazon too. I just get both at my local jewelry supply store. Okay, so I'm going to use that to glue the armature onto the piece. So now I'm going to show you why I think this is the most difficult part, gluing the armature onto the piece, only having two hands to do this. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to use a toothpick to do this. So for this part, I'm going to wear gloves because the glue is very, very strong. So if I get it on my hands, um, it's going to make my fingers stick to each other. Um, also, you want to wear gloves so you don't get any oils or dirt from your hands on the piece or the conductive paint. Um, here I am dropping little droplets of paint on the side and then I'm going to attach the armature to that and then I'm going to spray it after I put the glue on and I attach it. I'm going to spray it with the accelerant spray which makes the glue dry really quickly. Um, I tried to get that on camera but it was it was difficult. I wasn't paying attention to my hands not being underneath the camera and I didn't get that but that's okay so um, I think that you'll be able to figure out that part. You just need to hold the piece on it as you put little drops of glue uh, from the glue bottle using a toothpick. You can drop droplets onto your piece um, and then quickly spray them with the excellent spray. All right, so once you've got your armature piece glued to your cabochon, you can use a Q-tip and some nail polish remover to remove any excess chunks of glue um, where you don't want them, or you can leave them there if you want some more texture. I like to get the glue off of the areas where I don't want it because it kind of drips everywhere when I'm putting the armature on. So nail polish remover, I don't know if rubbing alcohol works that well, but definitely nail polish remover will get that off. All right, now the piece is all dry and it's ready to for uh, me to paint the silver conductive paint on it and this is what's going to allow the copper to grow on the piece uh, so you want to shake it up first i'll put links um, in below where you can order this um, we're going to use some uh, little paint brushes to paint it on you can get those on amazon or you can buy them at walmart or wherever and i like to have a variety of paint brushes depending on like how big the piece is um, and then also I've tried out different paint brushes, the ones with the little black um, hairs on them. Those sometimes will come off when I'm painting on the conductive silver and then I'll have to pick it out of the paint. 
it just depends and the white ones that you see right there with the white tips those are pretty good but they're a little bit more expensive i think i got those at walmart a while ago you want to keep your paint brushes somewhere where they're not getting like dust and debris on them because they need to be clean when you're painting the paint on so that everything electroforms perfectly all right so we're getting ready to um paint on the electroforming conductive paint I'm going to shake it up real good make sure it's mixed up really well this is what it looks like when you take the lid off it is silver um and then i'm going to use the little black bristled paintbrush i'm going to start um applying the silver conductive paint on the areas that i want to grow copper and i'm going to specifically put a lot more um on the sides where the armature is attached to the piece because i want it to really grow a lot of copper there to reinforce that armature so it doesn't uh, break off. I'm sorry it's not centered. Um, I'm still getting used to recording and making jewelry at the same time even though I've been doing it for a while. Sometimes I get into the zone and I'm not really paying attention so sorry it's not in the middle there but I'm gonna put a lot of paint um, on both sides where the armature is touching and attached to the cabochon. All right, so I'm still painting it on and I want to put a bunch of it on there, a generous amount. And I'm going to paint it, just like I said, where I want the copper to grow. So I'm going to paint it all around the top. I'm going to put it along the sides um, of that piece of copper that I attached to the cabochon, the armature, on the back. Just like a generous amount, especially where it's attached to the cabochon. And then everywhere I want copper to grow. Now that we've got the uh, piece painted, we're going to hang it for 12 hours and let it sit for 12 hours. So I use my workbench area here. I've got a little special hook um, over there in, in the pegboard between the hammers, and that's where I hang stuff to dry. So I'm going to let it hang there for 12 hours. Okay, before we actually start the electroforming process, I just wanted to show you, you can buy the whole entire electroforming kit on Rio Grande for $5.95 plus tax. Um, that's expensive, but hey, it's got like everything that you need to get started. Um, or you can kind of shop around on Amazon, um, and on the internet. All right, so it's been sitting for over 12 hours. Now we're going to have to get the surface area of all of the sides where we have painted conductive paint and where we want our copper to grow. So to get the surface area, we're going to have to do some math. So I got a piece of paper and a pencil. My gloves are on. You have to wear your gloves at this point. You don't want to get any oils on that paint. If you get any oils or dirt from your hands on that paint, it's not going to electroform properly. So we're going to use this caliper that I have um, to measure in inches. Um, and we're going to get the surface area of each side of the piece where I have painted the conductive silver paint. Now, a a quick recap on getting the surface area. Well, getting the area is base times height is the area, and then if it's a triangle, it's base times height uh, divided by 2 or times 0.5. So you have to look at it in little geometric shapes when you're doing this. So we're going to do the side first. We're going to do the width, and then we're going to do the height. And I think the width is 0.28, and then we'll do the height, and that's 0.52, and then we're going to write it down. So it's decimals, 0.52 times 0.28. And then I'm going to just, when I total this up, when I multiply this, I'm going to multiply it. After I get the total, I'm going to multiply it by two. Because I'm assuming both sides of this cabochon, I have the same amount, uh, amount of paint on both sides. So I'll just multiply it by two. Okay? So that's both the sides right there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the area of the face right there, the front. And I'm going to do the width of it times the height of it. So you can see that the width is 0 0.70 and the height is 0.19. So write it down, 0 0.70 times 0 0.19. Now we're going to do the back side and we're going to do the height and the width. And that would be 0 0.74 times 0 0.39. Now we're going to do the top of the stone, so we're going to do the width times the length. We're going to measure the width, measure the length, and write it down. So that's 0 0.24 times 0.38. Now I like to label each one of these math problems here so I know that which one goes to which side in case there's something up with my math um, afterwards or during so I can figure out what I did wrong. So that was the top, the first one I did was the sides, um, and then I did the back, and then we also did the front. So it's all labeled. 
Okay, so you also need to have the area of the armature because you want that to grow copper on it too. So we'll, we need to find out the area. So we're going to get the width of it and the length of it. And to find out the length of it, you can get a piece of dental floss and you can drape it from one end to the other and then just measure that piece of dental floss. Or you could have measured it ahead of time before you bent it. So before I bent it into this circle, after I cut it, there was like probably 10 different times I could have measured it, but I never did. So I'm gonna measure it now using a piece of dental floss to see what the length of it is. This is the width. So I just got the width of it, okay. Um, I'm gonna pause the video and use a piece of dental floss to get the length. Okay, so I got the width and the length of it after using a piece of dental floss to get the length. The width of it was 0 0.08, and the length of it after I measured it using a piece of dental floss was 3.39. After using my calculator just to multiply everything together and get the area of all the different sides, I got 1.05 after I added all those sides together. Then you want to multiply it times 0.2. Okay, and that will give you your magical number that you're going to need to set your amperage to, which mine is 0.21. That's what I'm going to set my amps to on my rectifier, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So you're going to need a hook to hang your piece from while it's in the bath. So I'm taking the 14 gauge wire, the round wire, and I am bending it to make a hook to hang my piece from so I can hang it in the bath to electroform it. So here's how I do it. I'm using a one and a half by six piece of copper for the electroforming process. This is the anode, which is going to end up coating your piece in copper during the process. So you're going to need some either anode bags that you can buy off the Rio Grande website, or you can use a coffee filter. And it's important to wrap up your anode because as this copper is coming out and electroforming your piece, it creates some sludge and you want to keep your bath clean. So you want to filter that sludge out. You want to be able to reuse your blue juice over and over again. So you want to keep it clean. So this will keep the sludge from building up at the bottom of your beaker. Okay, so I've got the anode bag wrapped around the anode, and I'm gonna in clip it to the side of my beaker. And I can't hold the phone and do that at the same time, so I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna clip it to the side. Hopefully the anode bag isn't too dirty and won't mess with my um, piece being electroformed, because sometimes if these get right, like too clogged up and dirty, that can affect your piece electroforming properly. Okay, so you want to like leave um, about an inch up at the top, okay? This is my bus bar where I'm going to end up hanging my piece. And I'll probably slide everything over. Oh, let me do that. Yeah, so you do want to invest in some clips. They're on Amazon. They're pretty cheap, if I remember. Um, okay. Okay, so here is the blue juice, the electroforming copper solution, and I'm going to pour it in, okay? And I'm just going to take the bus bar off to do that, and sometimes it can get kind of messy. I'm just going to pour it in. Now, there's hydrochloric acid in here, so you want to keep your countertops covered with things that are made of like acrylic or plastic definitely not metal because there's hydrochloric acid in here and it will eat through your countertops um so laminate countertops you'll ruin them so yeah make sure you definitely safeguard your countertops and that might not be enough so i might add just a little bit more and right now I'm going to figure out if I need to add more blue juice or not. Um, and I wanted to show you, I'm going to add some clips to the side of the bus bar to hold it in place. Okay, cool. So actually I don't, the whole entire piece is submerged. So I don't need to add any more blue juice. Okay, so I did add um, some pieces to the sides. Um, I mean clips. And then you can see when you turn this on. And you don't have to have it at a high speed. That's probably good enough right there. Um, this is as long as you can see that the water is swirling. See how you can see it moving? That's pretty good. So about there. I want it about there. You can turn it down a little. So 
now we've got that the only thing left to do is attach our negative and positive leads here and then turn it on and set it to 0.21 now the negative lead is always going to go on to the bus bar so you can attach it to the bus bar you know once this is on um you cannot touch any of this or you will get electrocuted it's off so it's safe but once you have your positive and your negative connected and you want to connect your positive lead to your anode you cannot come up and touch the bus bar or the piece you can't touch the anode you can't touch any of this or you will get electrocuted okay so once it's on if you want to touch any of this you have to turn it off before you touch any of this okay that is my safety warning to everybody turn the rectifier off like it is now before you touch any of this okay always be very safe all right so i'm gonna turn it on and i'm only gonna mess with the current the amps don't mess with the voltage the voltage is already where it's supposed to go so we're going to set it to 0.21 one of them is coarse and one of them is fine on the knob so and i'm going to mess with both of them depending on what the amps are set at because i don't remember okay and i only need to go to 0.21 you'll see 0.121 is that's pretty high okay so i'm going to go down to 0.21 and i think i'm using the fine one i could probably use coarse so can, oh there we go there we go um and yeah so i'm gonna put it on two one that's about right right there maybe i'll put it on point two just to see what happens sometimes i turn it up just a little bit it makes the piece grow um chunkier copper sometimes and gives it more texture it just depends on what you got going on i like to electroform my pieces for six to eight hours turn everything off check it and if it looks good and it's sturdy then i'm good some people recommend doing it for 12 plus hours i've never done it that way and all of my pieces are still together and they're good to go okay all right make sure you do this in a low traffic area where no one's going to come around and accidentally knock it over and mess with it no cats um, little kids or people tell everybody in the house what you're doing when you do it also um, probably gonna come back I like to come back like 10 to 15 minutes after I put it in the bath just to make sure it's working so I'm not gonna really wait like eight hours before I check it for the first time I'm gonna come back in like 10 to 15 minutes just to see um, if it's working okay so I left it on for nine hours I'm turning it off <gasps> yes and I did come back five minutes after I first put it in and it was working. And this is the final piece. And now I'm going to um, shine it up and patina it. And then I'm going to have my um, pendant. And I'm going to make some jump rings for it and put it on a chain. And it's going to be amazing. So after all was said and done, I added jump rings and a chain. And here it is. Oh yeah, super awesome. Love it.